Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the standard algorithm library as previously discussed. So if you didn't see that previous video, make sure you follow those in the sequence and you'll be able to follow along here. Because today I'm going to be talking about, before we get into the nitty gritty details of the algorithm library, a little bit about its design and why this is important. I'll leave you with a little bit of advice on how to choose for the algorithms as well when you find repeats. Well, that is the repeats between containers, which we've already seen, and the algorithms library itself. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into CPP reference here and try to understand what's going on here with our algorithm library. Now the algorithm library itself is very handy. So let's just go ahead and take a little peek at it. And in the last video, I went through this just a little bit talking about the different categories of the algorithms that we find. And these are going to be the things that we'll get into in the next videos where I'll actually show some code and run through these. But you might notice something kind of interesting here. And the first thing that you're going to find here is, well, we have some algorithms that we've already looked at. Well, at least when we are talking about the different containers that were available in C++. So for instance, let's go ahead and take some notes here. I see that there is find here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and highlight it in our algorithm library here. But you might also observe if we go ahead and let's open up another tab here for a CPP reference. And I'll go ahead and just highlight uh, find here, which we're looking at. And if I go into one of our containers, oh, let's find one here like set, for instance. Let's go ahead and look here. And you'll see in the lookup section, we also have find. Okay, so let's try to compare them and see if there's any sort of difference here. Because, well, I've found two different um, find functions here. And I want to know which one to use. So first and foremost, let's see. On the right side here is my set container here. Okay, you can keep track of it here at the very top where it says set. And the complexity here is logarithmic. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our find here. And if I go ahead and scroll down here, let's go ahead and try to find our complexity. It says at most and comparisons here at most and applications here. So this is looking like it might be an O of n algorithm here. So there is a difference here in our standard library where I have find. And this is the first thing that I want to point out here. I can probably use this find or if I find a uh, find here in my algorithm library, there might be a more optimized version for the particular container that you're using in the standard template library. And as we know, logarithmic complexity is going to be better than a linear time complexity. So for instance, if I'm running this find on a vector or some maybe sequentially laid out data structure that's unordered, I need to look at every single element here. But the set itself might be logarithmic because, well, what do we remember about set? It is ordered. So that means we can do some sort of binary search or perhaps some other algorithm and optimization to get this down to a logarithmic complexity. So the first note that I want to make about this video here, and let's just go ahead and make it uh, up here, is prefer container versions of algorithms. Okay. So I'll try to point these out a lot as we go through this series. I might miss some, but again, if you found find in one of these containers, like set, for instance, prefer that one because it's been optimized. It knows something about the internals of the data structures. So with that said, that's the first thing to keep in mind. And that's where you can get much better performance. Oftentimes the standard template library, for instance, um, gets sort of um, uh, a bad review because it's not uh, optimize as much. Well, if we use the right container for the right job, we're getting the same complexity. And then of course we could optimize it further, but let's at least give ourselves a chance at performance here by using the right uh, particular version of find here. Okay, so you'll find that in various containers where it can make a difference. Now let's go ahead and with that in mind, keep um, discussing a little bit about the design of the standard template library and algorithms in particular. And for this, I'm just going to draw uh, some arrows here. I'm going to draw one like this, and I'm going to draw one like this. And for those of you who have taken a geometry class here, you'll notice that I'm putting and putting a uh, right angle here, 90 degrees. Sometimes we call this perpendicular, or sometimes we give it another word, uh, orthogonal. We like to use the word orthogonal when it comes to design here. 
And what we're gonna go ahead and put here is the container on one axis. Let's actually do this in a different color here. Let's put our container on one, and then we'll actually put our algorithm as indicated by this other line going up here. Now, what I'm representing here and where we use the terms orthogonal is that the uh, actual design of the algorithm should be independent of the container. So what this bullet point is really saying is this is to support generic programming, okay? And that's the idea with the structure of the algorithm library. That is, again, so that we can have our containers independent of the algorithms. And then in order to perform the algorithm, which is accessing the containers data, we use our iterators, or eventually we'll get to ranges, as we'll find out for a lot of the C++ algorithms. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look here. Again, I'll bring up uh, algorithm here. And if I look at this find one, this particular one that we have here, and let's just go ahead and take a look at the uh, first uh, version of this. And again, this is why you'll observe that these algorithms are templated uh, functions here, okay? Because that way, if I just have a function, it's not part of the actual object unless there's a specific optimized case. Like for instance, where we found here in the set container, that find would do a better job here, okay? So that just sort of makes sense here. But otherwise, if we have our own data structures that we write, for instance, um, and we write our own iterators here that support a input iterator in this particular case, we can use that and try to find and see if a value exists, okay? So that's how we wanna sort of understand this. And then you'll see that there's many different overloads for how we can perform this. Um, and we'll get into some of those details as we move forward. But let's just go ahead and look at for an example here, just so we can understand the structure. And then we'll get into some code in the other lessons here. That if, for instance, I have an array, we've talked about standard array here. I'm looking, and let's see if I just have, actually, let's just look here at find here, which has this vector. I'm just looking with a pair of iterators, begin and end for a specific value, okay? Uh, the beginning, the ending, and a specific value, the beginning, the ending, and the specific value. Okay, so that's how we'll read through this. It looks like a lot at first, but again, with a little bit of practice, we'll be able to uh, understand this as we look at a few algorithms and practice. So it's really cool here, and again, the motivating part of this uh, series here, if I go back to this find uh, portion here, is that I can really break away from this idea of having raw loops. Now, what do I mean by a raw loop? I mean for int i equals zero, i less than size of some container, et cetera, et cetera, and we proceed. So instead, we can start writing stuff like in this example where we have a uh, range-based uh, loop here, and we're just looking for some element within you know, some range here. Uh, to see, apparently, in this particular example, if something in this set is also in uh, this set is what it looks like here. Okay, so that's the idea or rather to say that something that's here uh, in this vector, you know, is that also an element in this vector, okay? So that's the idea here. We're avoiding writing another loop within a loop here. It's just very clear and self-documenting here that we have or are finding and trying to look for something here. Now I'll go ahead and point you to a very famous talk here as we end this lesson here um, called C++ Seasonings by Sean Parent, who's done a lot of C++ work. Um, and this is where, if you hear folks talk about the sort of no raw loops in C++, and especially modern C++, Sean is kind of uh, explaining or hinting or, you know, very strongly encouraging that we don't use raw loops if we're able to get away with it. I know my performance folks might say stuff about SIMD instructions and these types of things, but in general, we can write... Uh, self-documenting expressive code in this manner. So again, this is what we want to try to aim or strive for. And you can watch this talk. It does a really nice job. Sean uh, does uh, explaining it. All right, folks. So with that said, I'll go ahead and leave you there. We're going to go ahead and continue on our journey talking about some of the algorithms now. You'll be able to find those on the courses.mshot.io page if you want to track your progress as there'll probably be a bunch of videos here in this series so hopefully you uh, enjoy that. Uh, otherwise, just look out for the videos and um, 
we'll uh, start having some fun with programming and actually demonstrating some of these. And you'll get an idea of what's there. The important thing is just to know what exists so that, again, you don't really have to write your loops. There's probably an algorithm for most of the things that you want to do. Now, again, that's with the caveat performance aside, you might want to optimize things, but let's get the code right first, and then we can go ahead and fine tune as we need. All right, folks. Anyways, I'll go ahead and leave you with that. And thanks for your time and attention. As always, I'll see you in the next one.